Hello. Today we're going to have the power outage special for anyone out there <laughs> without power, without water. And we're talking about power. We're talking about power, baby. Power. Yeah, yeah power with the uh, Hammond V3. The power. Yeah, so you didn't finish the uh, conversation. And no. you're driving a few people crazy because they need to know what the settings were. What, what, what was it? Okay, I'll tell you how to do this. Uh, you, you take it back off the B3. And um, I always have the back off my B3 anyway because it looks good. You know, <laughs> you know, all the tubes and everything's in there. But uh, it looks like a, a business, something you're at business when you got the back off, you know. When it's on, it just looks like a piece of furniture sitting up on the stage in your way, you know. But uh, no, I, I always have it. As a matter of fact, I don't have a back for my B3. <laughs> do, you think, do you think that impresses the girls? I don't know about the girls, but it sure looks good. You know, <laughs> turning Leslie around and your B3 around on all those. It's kind of like a little light show, you know. It I'm, impresses me, I can tell yeah, you. Yeah, on its own. Mine's back in, you know, probably out in the woods somewhere down in Mississippi. But uh, when I crashed. Oh, the back. It, yeah, in the back of the organ, <laughs> the seat and everything. <laughs> But uh, it sounds great. Let me tell you, here's how you do it. Um, take the back off your organ, and right where the, the bar from the pedal goes, there's a little volume box about that tall, little chrome thing, and it's got a button on it that you'll see right in the top center of it. Pop that button out of there, and then get a small flathead screwdriver, and there's a screw in there, Get somebody to hold down a note or just put a matchbook between a note, get a note going on that, and you can, you can get right through that little hole and back that screw out, and it'll just go like that. It'll, it'll, uh, uh, you're getting all maximum power from the organ, all the output from the organ. But get it out. And just where it's about ready to fall out, and then turn it a half a notch, and you're good for that part. All right, and I go down uh, on the front on the bottom, and there's a, a tone uh, control, and it's two little two little things that stick out, and you take a screwdriver and put it in it like that. One one is for tone, and one is for percussion. And I turn the percussion on with one draw bar out, and I'll hit the percussion and bam, and it'll go bam, bam, bam. It'll it'll draws the percussion out, so you can get that just how you want it. And then over here on uh, the other little button, that's for your tone. And generally they're, they're set, you know, twelve o'clock high. Well, if you turn it to the left, it's going to get a little darker tone, to the right a little brighter. So you get the, the combination of those, all three, you know, on Isn't It a Pity, uh, there's a, a the real, real slow version, the first version. I, I, I was playing a M100, M100, A100, but anyway, it doesn't matter, um, and I had the percussion set to, so that I could just hit the button and go It was beautiful, a beautiful effect. And you can hear it on that song, but that's what that is. And I left it that way, you know. <laughs> They probably still hadn't figured it out at Apple, you know. <laughs> what the hell did he do? But that's how, that's how, and... I generally haven't told all this. I got these. Uh, you can also get a different tube for your uh, for your uh, uh, your Leslie. You have a little more power, but all it does is just increase the the power out of the Leslie itself, and you get a rattly sound. You know, I'm, I, I like coming out of the organ, get the, the maximum potential out of the organ, and the Leslie just carries that. You know, you want that. This is what you want to sound, not the, a broken speaker or a whirlybird, you know. Well, speaking of uh, whirlybirds, in the older uh, 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 Leslie's, uh, the, you know, there's only one live horn. The other one's a, a weight. Uh, 
I always crack those little bitty things on the outside of the horn. I take those off. Those are just extra weight. Helps it slow up real fast, like you know, and then wind down slower. Well, I got those are missing, but you can look in the live one, and nine times out of ten, look down in there, and you'll see a little piece of cotton, and get you some uh, alligator clips, and reach down in and pull it out, and you'll have a cotton wad about that long, especially if. Uh, the Leslie is an older Leslie because they did that to take the highs out for in, in cathedrals and churches and auditoriums. Uh, so that, that's what that's what some of them, the older Leslies, come with that like that. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> I know I had one, and I always check. You know, the newer Leslies I don't think do, but those are the uh, other things that I know kind of put together. Uh, I, I learned a lot of my stuff from a guy that ain't around anymore. He was from Memphis, named Charles Casey. And he gave me his trade secrets, and uh, I'm just spilling the beans on it. But I think everybody needs to know. Well, yeah, I mean, you're 72 now, so... It's yeah, and, and uh, you won't get my sound. What it'll do, you can contour your B3 and Leslie to uh, uh, your own unique sound you know so you still stop uh when i had my place in mississippi my studio i had three leslie's and one of them was a real old one and, and it just started to stop you know the l l22 and uh, uh uh and i think it was what it was called it was white but i had a thing put together where i could run all three leslie's on one of them i would set the pulley on, on the top uh there's three Sizes on the pulley that makes it go faster or slower, you know. Uh, boom, boom, you know. I, I would put one on one speed, and the other Leslie, I would put it on another speed, and the third Leslie, I put it on another one, and I would do the same with the bottom. Uh, there's a way you can adjust those, and it gets the whole thing moving. It would make make it move like that. A wall of sound doing that right there. It was amazing, absolutely. And when you. <laughs> I mean, it's just like thunder and a tidal wave rolling at you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely amazing. So, uh, isn't it true though when, when the B3 that you that we have here that you yeah, have my '66, uh, the '66 when it went out of the back of your van, the trailer, the yeah. trailer, it bent the bar. Yeah, uh, so it gives it a very uh, unique sound. I was talking sound. to my, my B3 guy um, here in, in Austin. And I said, There's, this thing, it just sounds out just a little bit of when I get up here, you know. And uh, he told me, he said, well, the, you're, you're, there's a tone rod that goes down through it, and yours is slightly bent. Yeah, but so it, it gives it a little edge. That comes from when it rolled down the road about 70 miles an hour in Mississippi when Dr. King got assassinated. Well, can you tell the story? Because it, it has a very unique sound, and so no one could ever get it unless they had this B3. Yeah, this particular Leslie and everything. Uh, well, when uh, we was on the road with my band, The Counts, and uh, uh, it wasn't really my band, it was our band. And uh, uh, most of the guys are still around. You know, Wayne Thompson, Stanley Cecil, other guys have passed on. But we were uh, down in Mississippi playing, I think it was down in Jackson, and uh, we're coming back from the gig, and um, news was on, flashed on, uh, Dr. King was assassinated. And uh, we thought, well, hell, we better get on back. So we're cooking on down the road. Got a van that says Memphis Counts on it with notes on it, <laughs> and a, a trailer, a homemade trailer. And the guitar player, Lonnie Lawson, forgot to push down that thing on the ball, you know, the little thing that locked it in there. He forgot to do that. Tongue. We had to hook the chains up, and we're booking down the road about 70 miles an hour. I just got my B3, and they were talking about insuring it, and I didn't have $53 to insure it. I said, I don't know what's going to happen. And uh, <laughs> what could possibly happen? Well... We're headed back to Memphis, and the, the tongue of the trailer come off like, like that and went down into the pavement. And that jerked, <laughs> jerked the truck. And uh, looked back, uh, I was in the very back, and I didn't know what had happened. 
and uh, went back just to see my, my organ come through the top of the trailer and go down the road and tumble like that. I had uh, blankets around it, you know, packing blanket. <laughs> and it was, it was sitting on the ground like that. The back was gone. The top was gone. The pedals were out in the woods. The stool, the bench was out in the woods. I mean, it was, it was just a mess. I uh, broke my heart. We got back to the cabaret club in, in Memphis in, on Southern. I plugged it in. The the key the keys went like this uh -huh. on both of them. And uh, I plugged it in. It sounded better than it ever sounded. And it's still that way. It never, never changed anything. It sounded so good. Well, and my guy here was going through it. Bob Warman is his name here in Austin. Best the best yes. B three guy around, Absolutely. and uh, you know, like the pianos and stuff. But uh, he said, "Well, he said that tone rod is bent just slightly." He said, "So it's it's off down here just a little bit, and that's why that's what it is. You know, like a piano when it's tuned perfectly, it just doesn't sound right. Right, it's, it's got to be off just just a little bit, you know, to give it that edge, you know. But when you're using all ten fingers and you're making couple of handfuls of chords it's nice to have a little some mystery in there you know and that has to do with the tuning of the instrument just a little bit you know gives you some room to play with and express a little more so who were some of your influences in the early days mine well used to be booker t uh but it was jimmy smith and jimmy mcgriff and booker t jones that was the guys for me you know uh uh, I like Felix Cavalier as well, and, and uh, uh, Spencer Davis, uh, that band, uh, Stevie Winwood. I, I, I like the w way he played and how he sang. And uh, I guess that's our cue right there. <laughs> I guess <Yeah>. so. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> that's all I know. Anyway. <laughs> all right. I hope it helps out. <laughs>